Mailbag time. Something very interesting in this box. You're going to like this one. And some other bits and pieces we'll look at. We'll look at this last. So make sure you stick around for that. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you're first time here. If you like mailbag videos or electronics repair stuff. Oh, <laughs> this finally arrived. I ordered these, I don't know, six months ago. I just did a AliExpress claim to get money back because they hadn't arrived. I did that last week. So these are the E10 Edison screw bulb holders. So I got these for a project I was going to do for my wife. She wanted something for a costume to have like a dangly bulb sort of thing. The thing she wanted them for has been and gone because that was so long ago. I don't know, I might find use for them now. Yeah, we'll see. Could be handy for something. Somewhere I've actually got the LED bulbs which were supposed to go in these things. They're here somewhere. There are links for these things down below as well. Four megahertz crystals. So I did a repair not long ago on a electro fusion welder and it had a bad crystal. I didn't actually have any brand new crystals to replace it with. I had to use a recovered one I've pulled out of something some time ago. I don't know. It worked. But it made me realise I need to get some 4 megahertz crystals, so now I've got some 4 megahertz crystals. Next time I'll actually have the right part. Someone mentioned these to me on one of my mailbag videos, I think. Or something I was doing, somebody mentioned these. I didn't even realise they existed. It's a UV test card, saying so T was UV or UVC. So I guess that means A or B, I don't know, but anyway. Let's get a UV torch, see what happens. So what I did is I shone this UV torch at this card and that made the word, well the letters UV show up. I think it's fading back again as well. I don't think it's permanent. Shine a torch on it again. There you go, it's darker again. So yeah, that's working. So that's that torch there, so it's a UVA, UVB, something like that. I've also got this one here. These are what I use for curing uh, UV solder mask on PCBs and I'm working on those. The black one's supposed to be more powerful than this one. This is more of a spread pattern, obviously. You can see that's fading away. Let's just test again with this one. There you go, it's come back again. So yeah, that works fine. Could be handy. See what if uh, something's UVC or UVA, UVB. Or whether it's just blue light. This is actually one of the reasons I got these, because these are supposed to be UV bulbs, right? Black light bulbs. Or well, LEDs on this string here. So let's plug this in and see what happens. Right, so I've plugged these in. You can see they're now on. Let's stick this by and see what comes up. See if anything comes up. Because to me, they didn't really seem like blue LEDs. They seemed more like pink LEDs. No, it didn't seem like UV at all. I'm going to see if anything shows up. No, nope, nothing at all. No effect. As expected, these are pink LEDs, not the UV. And if you look on the packet, it's also got a pink dot on it. That could be a giveaway. This thing here feels almost empty. It's like, it feels like there's almost nothing in it. So we'll see. Oh no, there's something in there. If I can get to it. Just that one little bag. It's an MC14094BDR2G. So apparently it's an 8-bit shift register tri-state. More packages. SOIC 16 packages. Not ideal, but sometimes you have to substitute with a new modern equivalent. This one seems more promising, I can fill something in it. SN74LS00N, which is a, a quad 2 in NAND gate, 14 pin dip. These are the parts I thought I might need when I was repairing the HP 3561A. And as I've mentioned previously in other videos and other mailbags, I'll look at a piece of equipment, I'll look for the circuit diagram, look for parts which I don't currently have, and all of them thinking that, hey, these parts might be hard to get at some point in the future, and if this blows up again, I might need them. So I'll often actually look through and just sort of search out for circuit diagrams and see what is in there that could potentially fail and need replacement. So I have bought a bunch of parts out of stacked on the back of my bench here which I need to organise yet, which I don't currently need but I could need one day. 
which means at least I'll have a stock of them. The problem with these older parts is that they are getting harder to find, they're getting rarer. Some of these things like dip packages maybe not getting made anymore in some versions, so I'll grab them when I can and I think I might need them. One day I suppose I could probably sell my collection for a lot of money because everyone would be wanting them, but right now they're for me. This is an interesting package. Uh, all right, battery holders. They're six AA cell battery holders. So it's got like a triangular pattern and it holds six AA batteries. So I got these for stock because I've been using these to do repairs on some farm tech light bulb timers because the battery holders, you know, they get left with batteries and they get corroded, you know, but the batteries leak or maybe they get wet and then they corrode or something like that. So these are a common failure points. So I bought a stock of these so when I get asked to repair them, I can just replace the battery holder instead of messing around trying to fix it. And now we have the big package. This is a pretty cool piece of gear. This will be a repair video, or at least a refurbishment video. At the very least, be a refurbishment video, potentially a repair video. So make sure you subscribe for that. I told the guy to pack it really well with plenty of padding. Looks like he's done that. This definitely is looking definitely improved. Heaps of padding. Yep. And it's double boxed as well. Excellent. Good job. Good job. Now we have box number two. See, this is how you package a piece of test gear. Manual, I'm not going to show you what that is yet. Lots more packaging. This guy's done a really good job. I actually might even link to his eBay page or something. This deserves a well done, definitely. I'm gonna come back when I've got it unwrapped. And we're still going, it's inside a plastic bag as well. You guess what it is yet? How about now? Do you know what it is now? Come on, comments down below if you know what this is. I'll give you five seconds. Hurry up. It's a Heathcote. There you go. It's a semiconductor curve tracer. So this is a Heathcote curve tracer. So you can use this with your oscilloscope, hook it up to that. You can check transistors for how they respond to voltage and current. That's what a curve tracer does. So there's nothing on the front here. Flip around to the back. Here's the back. Those are the outputs to the oscilloscope. So channel one, channel two, and a common ground. I'll probably have to make some kind of connector up for that or something. It's got a normal cow switch, used for testing the output, calibrating the output as well. We've got some adjustments inside, I believe, and it's adjustable voltage. I need to figure out how to change that. Also, it's got the wrong plug on it, so I need to do something about this. Replace that whole cord more slightly. Wired for 120 volt AC. I need to rewire that, but I'll do that when I replace the cord. So this is going to be an upcoming video. I'll pull this thing apart, I'll it, ship it down, refurbish it, see if it works. And here, we have manuals. So we've got CD, we have a spare part, interestingly. MPS A20, nice to include that. And Heathkit assembly manual, whole thing. Excellent, it's always really nice to have the original manuals. So this is great, having this with it. Very good. So it will tell you how to do calibration and stuff like that on it as well. It will be in there. Very nice. So I'm looking forward to playing around with this. This will definitely be interesting. So don't forget to hit like and subscribe to see this thing. Now this colour I thought it would be a bit more creamy than yellow. So I don't know if it's from a smoker's home or if it's just not quite the colour I was expecting. I'm not quite sure. I expect it to be more of a creamy colour. I'll give you an example. More like this you see. Similar sort of era, I think, you know, same sort of boxes, very similar, but different knobs. I was expecting something more like this colour than that colour, but that's fine. It could just be dirty, it could be the actual colour, I don't know. I also have this, actually. Maybe, maybe it's okay, I don't know, but I've also got this unit, which says different colour scheme again. I don't know. There must be a standard for it, surely. 
Over here is a Patreon support link if you want to help me buy more bits of test gear to fix and do videos about. Just like this thing, my Patreons help pay for this. And my memberships, of course. Also, YouTube memberships. I prefer the Patreon one because I can actually give you back more because I do publish early videos and I can upload circuit diagrams and service manual stuff like that on Patreon. So I do actually have some extra special stuff there for Patreons. Whereas the YouTube memberships don't tend to get that because you know it's quite limited what I can actually do on the YouTube membership side. But the Patreon side, I'll give you a bit more. So if you're going to support me, go through the Patreon one if you can. So there's a link here for things I think you should watch. There's a link there for things YouTube thinks you should watch. There's a subscribe link here if you're not already subscribed, which you should do. You especially click the bell icon. And there's a Patreon support link over here to do what I just said. Bye.